this is the section wherein it is depicting what are the sections that you have to give in case of carcinoma endometrium okay so as you can see over here okay this is the tumor that we have seen you will give the dimensions the location of the tumor okay then to give the depth of the invasion of the myometrium you have to go for serial slicing as we can appreciate over here okay and that particular slice which is showing the maximum invasion of the myometrium has to be documented you should also write whether it is more than 50 percent or less than 50 percent you know involvement is there or no this is very very important okay after you have given four sections from the tumor okay you have to give the section so this is the number one section then you have to give the uninvolved endomyo along with that you have to give the unremarkable cervix then you have to include bilateral fallopian tubes bilateral ovaries along with that you have to include the parametrium as well so these are the different sections that you have to take okay in your carcinoma endometrium and these are the sections you have to say in your exam this is a very very important exam viva question as well myself dr jibran ahmed presents to you simply pathology and today we are back with an important session today we are going to start with the grossing of the female genital tract part one okay so in the first part we are going to discuss in details about the grossing of the uterus and the cervix now remember that the uterus and cervix it is kept as an exam specimen okay so it is a very important exam gross specimen so you should be very you know well versed with the uterus and the cervix okay what are the different parts okay so what is the relevant anatomy everything should be known in details so what are we going to study today we are going to see we are going to read about the orientation of the specimen we are going to see the rationale of the grossing okay how the grossing is done how the specimen is bisected and opened okay okay not only that we are going to also see what are the different important points of orientation of the specimen what are the different kinds of specimens that you receive okay for example in case of the uterus any endometrial biopsies products of conception is there or it is a total hysterectomy subtotal hysterectomy okay so what is the nature of the specimen you have to know in case of cervix whether it is the conization specimen leap specimen or whether cervix is sent as a part of a radical hysterectomy okay then what are the different sections that you have to take and what is the rationale behind those sections okay we will also see briefly about the staging okay both uh, of endometrial carcinoma as well as we are going to see the cervical carcinoma staging then the cap protocols as i have always uh, maintained and previously also i have told you the latest cap protocol uh, of reporting for individual organs are given in www.cap.org it is freely available so you can go and you can download the cap protocol from there directly then we are also going to see the relevant anatomy as i have already explained before so let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any more time so first we are going to see the grossing of the uterus okay so remember that the surgical pathologist okay they receive specimen of simple hysterectomy for a variety of non oncological indications like most commonly the fibroids uterus okay or you can also receive a hysterectomy specimen okay for carcinoma of the cervix or carcinoma of the endometrium so these are the common conditions and these are the different settings in which you are getting hysterectomy so if you look at the basic anatomy of the uterus it is a pear shaped organ which is situated in the center of the pelvis between the rectum posteriorly and the urinary bladder anteriorly the uterine cavity if you see it is triangular measuring an average of 6 cm in length the length of the uterus may vary widely depending on the menopausal status and parity between 5 to 15 centimeters but the average is 6 centimeter it has four main parts that is the fundus body isthmus and the cornu it is composed of an inner endometrial lining and myometrium or the muscular wall with a serosal covering which extends to the peritoneal reflection so let me show you the basic anatomy okay so for example if this is this is basically the uterus as you can appreciate over here okay so this is having the fundus okay it is having the body and the isthmus part okay then what else we can see this inner lining as i told you this inner lining that you can see this is the endometrial lining then you have the muscle layer and outside you have the serosa some amount of soft tissues which are present on the outer aspect over here they form what is known as the parametrium or the parametrial tissue okay okay then you are having uh, uh, the cervix okay the cervix part is also here okay so this is the cervix part and then you have the vagina over here you have the vagina okay 
sometimes along with hysterectomy you are also getting uh, the fallopian tubes as well as the ovaries so this is the fallopian tube over here okay and these are the ovaries over here as we can appreciate okay so this is the basic relevant anatomy of the uterus okay? the basic relevant anatomy of the uterus now the very important part that you should know that is the orientation of the orientation of the uterus is very important and is an important very important viva question in the exam they ask you this question so how do you know whether it is an anterior or posterior so usually they do not give any orientation of the uterus you have to make out for yourself it is easy to understand so remember that the insertion of the fallopian tube it is seen on the posterior surface okay on the posterior surface of the uterus the ovaries if you see they are also situated on the posterior aspect on the posterior side the peritoneal reflection is seen to dip down more inferiorly on the posterior surface the posterior surface is more flat as compared to the anterior surface which is more convex so what are the four important points remember the fallopian tube insertion basically is there on the posterior surface of the uterus secondly the ovaries are also situated and more prominent on the posterior aspect the peritoneal reflection is dipping down more inferiorly in the posterior surface and the posterior surface it is more flat as compared to the anterior surface so these are four important points one theoretical point that is there that the, that the round ligaments are attached to the cornu of the uterus on the anterior surface so you cannot always make out the round ligaments okay so the first four points are very important to understand now i will show you practically how the orientation is done if you see over here this is the uterus anterior this is the posterior view okay so the most reliable finding that you will see if you see the peritoneal reflection this is a smooth shiny peritoneal reflection it is dipping down more on the posterior aspect whereas it is dipping down okay okay less uh, inferiorly in the anterior aspect so this is one major point of difference secondly if you look over here the fallopian tube insertion okay they are more prominent on the posterior aspect okay if you see they are going and attaching backwards they are going and attaching on the backward okay and as a result if you see if you look okay the ovaries okay if you look at the ovaries okay if you look at the ovaries they are more uh, you know prominent on the posterior aspect so once the anterior and posterior orientation is there in that particular aspect the most important thing is that that you will be able to understand which is the right which is the left ovary so once it is clear which is anterior which is posterior you will know which is the posterior which, uh, which is the right ovary which is the left ovary which is the right fallopian tube which is the left fallopian tube okay so the only important thing is the orientation what which is the anterior and which is the posterior now from here you cannot make out which one is more flat so usually the posterior uh, uh, surface is more flat as compared to the anterior surface which is more convex so i will just repeat once more the peritoneal reflection number 1 in the orientation it is dipping down more in the posterior aspect the ovaries and the attachment of the fallopian tube is more prominent in the posterior aspect and the posterior aspect the uterus is more flat okay so this is all about the orientation and this is the relevant anatomy of the uterus okay so let us move ahead now now the uterine lymphatics they are draining into the pelvic and para aortic group of nodes now for carcinoma of the endometrium for carcinoma of the endometrium the inguinal group of lymph nodes intra abdominal lymph nodes okay other than the para aortic and pelvic lymph nodes are considered to be metastatic or m1 disease okay so remember uterine lymphatics they are draining into the pelvic and para aortic and these are the regional lymph nodes okay so they are not so if metastasis are seen in pelvic para aortic they are not regarded as m1 disease for carcinoma of the endometrium only metastasis in the inguinal and intra abdominal lymph nodes other than the para aortic and pelvic which are the regional lymph nodes are considered m1 disease so again this point is important to note for the cervix if you look for the cervix the regional nodes they include para cervical parametrial hypogastric that is the internal iliac and obturator common and external iliac presacral and lateral sacral so these are all the regional nodes okay remember in case of the cervix if you are looking at the cervix okay carcinoma of the cervix the para aortic nodes if they are positive are considered m1 or metastatic in nature okay and this is just the nodes which are draining 
For example, for the uterus, the draining lymph node regional is the pelvic and paraortic, and for cervix, it is these parasavical, parametrial, hypogastric, common and external iliac, pre and lateral sacral. These are the regional group of lymph nodes. Okay, okay. And uh, for carcinoma endometrium, uh, uh, the inguinal and intra-abdominal lymph node, other than pelvic and paraortic, they are M1. And for uh, carcinoma cervix, it is the paraortic nodes considered to be metastatic or M1 disease. Now, in case of the uterus, so what are the different types of specimens that we are receiving? So, very commonly you are receiving the endometrial biopsies and the curatage specimen. So, for such uh, biopsies or for such uh, specimens, the dimension, okay, the size range of the largest tissue fragment or the dimensions of the tissue in aggregate. So, sometimes many small tissues are together. So, with an aggregate, you know, you know, all things are measuring in aggregate or this much in volume as a maximum. So, you should mention like that. Okay, the entire specimen should be submitted for microscopic examination in case of the biopsies and the curatage specimen. Then comes the product of conception specimen. Okay, so the dimension again the same, the size range of the largest tissue fragment or the dimensions of the tissue in aggregate and or the volume of specimen should be documented. At least three cassettes should be submitted focused on any villous tissue that is grossly present to optimize the microscopic identification of the chorionic villi both for confirmation of the presence of an intrauterine pregnancy and to rule out molar gestation. Okay? Then if the initial three blocks that is the three cassettes that we have given if it does not contain the villi microscopically the remainder of the specimen should be submitted. If villi is still not identified the possibility of an ectopic pregnancy will exist a result that should be immediately communicated to the clinician because if ectopic pregnancy ruptures then it might prove fatal for the patient. Okay? So, remember these important points when you are receiving the products of conception. Thirdly, we are getting the hysterectomy specimens. Okay? So, now let us see the different types of hysterectomy. Okay? So, there is a total hysterectomy wherein the uterus and the cervix is removed. We have called it as a total hysterectomy. Subtotal hysterectomy wherein the uterus and part of cervix are removed and the cervical stump is left behind. Then we call it as a subtotal where, uh, when only a part of the cervix is removed. Pan hysterectomy is the uterus with the cervix along with that we are having the bilateral adnexa that is the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. Then we are calling it as pan hysterectomy. Okay, so, there is a total, subtotal, pan hysterectomy. Okay? Radical means whenever you are removing along with all these components, you are removing the part of the vagina, then it is called as a radical hysterectomy. Okay? So, I will come to the different types of radical hysterectomy, but let me first make it clear what are the different types of hysterectomy with the help of diagram. Why? Because these are again asked in your viva. Okay? So, what are the different types of hysterectomy? So, as I told you, this is the basic subtotal hysterectomy. So, what did we read in subtotal? Uterus and part of cervix is only removed. Okay, so as you can see in the subtotal, the uterus along with only part of the cervix is removed. That is the subtotal hysterectomy. Total hysterectomy when the complete cervix along with the uterus is removed. That is the total hysterectomy. And then we are we were having pan hysterectomy, which is also called as total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. So along with the uterus. And the cervix, you are also removing the fallopian tubes, bilateral fallopian tubes and the ovaries are also removed. Okay? So, I hope you have understood <coughs> what is subtotal, total and what is pan hysterectomy, also known as total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Now, in addition to all these components, if any part of the vagina is also removed, like we can see over here, okay, then we call it as the radical, we call it as radical hysterectomy. It is called as radical hysterectomy. Okay? So, radical hysterectomy. So, at least these basic points you should know. Now, if you are answering very well, maybe the examiner asks you what are the different classes of radical hysterectomy. So, again there are five main classes. So, number one is your class one that is extra facial wherein no vagina or parametrial tissue. What is the parametria? As I told you, it is the tissue which is surrounding the uterus that is the parametrial tissue. Okay, so, no vagina or parametria are removed. There is no ureteric mobilization. It is done for stage 1A1 disease without lymphovascular invasion. What is class 2 radical hysterectomy which is a modified radical? Okay, over here the mid portion of uterosacral ligament, parametria to the level of ureter and 1 centimeter vaginal margin are removed. It is done for FIGO stage 1A2. 1A1 with lymphovascular invasion. This was without lymphovascular invasion. 
then class 3 4 5 these are regarded as the radical form so in the radical class 3 all of the uterosacral ligament okay parametria to the origin of uterine artery and one third of the vagina is removed it is done for figo stage 1b 2a it is the most commonly performed surgery that is the class 3 radical uh, hysterectomy then class 4 radical three fourth of the vagina is removed superior vesical artery is sacrificed and ureter is completely dissected from the pubo vesical ligament it is done for recurrent disease class 5 radical resection includes portion of distal ureter as well as bladder it is done for recurrent disease as well along with all of them in radical hysterectomy lymph nodes are also removed okay in the form of different stations and they are sent for histopathology okay so basically you should remember them okay the radical hysterectomy the parametrial tissue okay part of the vagina is removed if you don't remember anything just you mention in radical hysterectomy part of the vagina is removed okay and the uterosacral ligament is also removed in case of radical hysterectomy okay so these are the different types of hysterectomy that we have seen now we will look at the steps of the grossing with in relation to the uterus now the steps of grossing in relation to the uterus can be divided under two headings one which is done for non malignant disease for example there is a fibroid uterus okay or they are done in case of a malignant condition for example carcinoma endometrium okay so first the non malignant disease let us see so the first five steps are more or less the same okay for uh, hysterectomy which is done for non malignant malignant or even for cervical carcinoma so you have to first measure and weigh the specimen it is optional to apply ink you should apply ink on the posterior surface of the uterus merely for identification or orientation in case one needs to go back to the specimen after it has been extensively sectioned now the technique of opening the uterus so i am going to teach you what is the basic technique now in the books they have given that there is a y shaped incision on the anterior surface or it can be bisected and sectioned so what we usually do i will tell you how to gross the uterus so suppose today is the pre grossing okay today is the pre grossing that means tomorrow you are going to gross today you are doing the pre gross so you want to keep the specimen for inside formalin okay so you have received this specimen okay so what you have to do what we used to do over here okay so for example this is the uterus so with the help of a non toothed forceps as you can see this is the non toothed forceps so one end we used to introduce into the endometrial cavity and remember you should use blunt end okay non toothed which doesn't have any tooth or blunt ended forceps so that you do not damage any structures uh, within okay so once you insert that with the help of a scalpel okay with the help of a scalpel and the butt pucker the scalpel which is mounted on the butt pucker handle okay so with that you make an incision so this is the incision that you make and then you cut open the uterus okay you will cut open the uterus so with this blunt toothed forceps inside you are making this incision as you can see and this this part this part of this uh, you know blunt ended uh, forceps this is going to guide you to take a uniform incision so that you cut open through the endometrial cavity this is very very important that you have to identify the cavity okay so this is how you should bisect and this is what we used to do in our grossing day so this is how you have to bisect the uterus okay okay so once you have bisected okay bisecting is very important why because if you do not bisect it then formalin will not penetrate after you bisect and open the specimen you should fix the specimen overnight in adequate amount of formalin okay then you should note the endometrial and myometrial thickness Remember, endometrial thickness may be increased in case of menorrhagia. Uh, Myometrium may be thickened and show tiny hemorrhagic spots in case of adenomyosis. So, these are some of the important gross findings. So, the examiner may ask you, okay, if for example, you can see tiny hemorrhagic spots. So, what is your, you know, presumptive diagnosis? You will think about adenomyosis. Okay, so grossly a lot of information you can get. Also, you might mention if there is any lesion, okay, example, any polyp or any blood clot is present in the endometrial cavity, you should mention that. In case you can see the fibroids, in case the fibroids are seen, you have to give the location of the fibroid, whether they are submucosal, whether they are intramural or they are subserosal. In case of many fibroids, you should mention the range in size. 
including the diameter of the largest one. Mention whether the cut surface is whirled or if there is any unusual feature such as necrosis or hemorrhage which is pre pre present. So, usually if you cut a fibroid tissue, okay, if you cut one fibroid tissue, so in the, you know, you can see whirling like this, okay, you can see whirling. So, the cut surface is white and it is usually whirled. Okay, remember, if both adnexa are also removed, then you mention the dimensions of each ovary, the cut surface. For example, you received ovary is something like this. Then along the long axis, you should cut and you should see, okay, uh, how the cut surface is. You should also measure the length of the fallopian tube and presence of any paratubule cyst if it is there. Paratubule cyst means if this is the tube over here, this is the fallopian tube, any paratubule cyst is present or not, okay. So, what are the sections that you should give? Okay, what are the sections that you should give in case of a non malignant uterus? So, three to four sections of the endomyometrium is very, very important. So, three to four sections of the endomyo means if this, for example, this is the uterine cavity and basically this is the uterus. For example, I am telling you. So, this initial portion, this is the endometrium. Okay, so this lining, let, let me use an, another uh, pen. Okay. So, this initial part, this is the endometrial lining of the cavity. This is the endometrial cavity, okay. So, what kind of section you should give? You should take the section like this. So, you should cut like this, like this. So, the section should be like this. It should include the endometrial lining. Along with that, the myometrium should come as well, okay. So, you have to take two to three sections from the endomyometrium. So, this is the endomyometrial section. So, you might take from here. You might take one section. So, remember every section should contain this lining, lining endometrium, okay. The lining of the endometrial cavity that is the endometrium has to be present in the section, okay. This is called as the endomyo. Then for example, for example, you have seen this fibroid is present over here. So, two to three sections of leomyoma or the fibroid as appropriate. In case of fibroid uterus, section each fibroid if there are up to three fibroids. In case there are more than three fibroids, then section the largest three fibroids with usual appearance. Besides, any grossly visible abnormal area should be sectioned as well. So, for example, you are looking at fibroids. So, there are multiple fibroids. So, you have cut down, you know, all the fibroids and, and you should ideally give uh, uh, three sections from the fibroid, okay, from the first three largest, uh, you know, fibroids. The largest three fibroids you should give. Apart from that, if any abnormal looking areas, any areas of hemorrhage is there in the fibroid, then you should section those areas separately and you should give. Along with that, you should give the right ovary and the transfer section of the right fallopian tube. Along with that, you should give the left ovary and the transfer section of the left fallopian tube and they are given in the individual cassette. So, this is the cut section of ovary. This is the transfer section of the tube. Okay. Similarly, this is for the right. Similarly, you should give for the left, the tube along with the left section of the ovary. So, this is how you are submitting the section and I hope most of you have already done the grossing of the usual, the uterus and the, uh, the normal uterus that you get, okay, for the fibroids. So, this is how a bisected uterus looks like. So, look very closely. This is how a bisected uterus looks like. So, now as you have cut open, so what is this area? Yes. Anyone can tell me what is this? This is the endometrial cavity. So, this is the endometrial cavity. Let me show you with a black pen. Okay. So, this as you can appreciate over here, this is the endometrial cavity. Okay. Now, basically if you see over here, can you see something over here? Let me show you with a lighter pen. So, you will be able to understand. Let me show with pink. Okay. So, if you can see over here, this is the endometrial lining. This is the lining of the endometrium. This is the cavity, okay, and this part is the lining. What is this part? Now, if you see, this is the myometrium. This is the myometrium. This is the myometrium. This is the myometrium, okay. So, what is very important over here, okay, and if you see on the outer aspect, if you see what is this is the serosal aspect. This is the serosal aspect okay this is the serosa okay this is the serosa now if you come below over here you can see the endometrial cavity it is actually continuing downwards okay so what is this cavity which is down this is the endo cervical canal endo cervical canal okay it is the endo cervical canal as you can appreciate okay now for example if you have cut open the uterus like this so this was, this is the, if you can see this part, okay, what is this part? 
this is the cervix this is the cervix this is the anterior lip okay this is the anterior lip so it was like this you have cut you have cut open like this okay it was like this so you have cut open so this part okay this became the anterior lip this became the anterior lip and this part became the posterior lip so if you just close there is an anterior part there is a posterior part of the cervix so there is an anterior lip okay of the cervix there is a posterior lip of the cervix and what is this this is the endo cervical canal okay this is very very important to understand because later on when i am going to teach you the uh, the grossing of the cervix then you should understand how you have to take the section okay now very important whenever the cervix is included so you have to give a section of the cervix as well so how do you give the cervix in case of a normal cervix also you have to give a section so you start cutting from here okay you start cutting from here and you take a section like this okay with the knife you start cutting and approaching from here so very important this lining this entire lining the ecto cervical cervical lining and the endo cervical lining and the transformation zone has to come understand so you cut like this from each lip from uh, the posterior lip you will take one section okay then from anterior lip you will take another section okay so this is very very important for you people okay this portion has to come okay the endo uh, the the uh, the columnar lining the endo cervical canal the columnar lining then the transformation zone and the stratified squamous epithelium on the outer aspect so this is the very important section that you have to give so whenever the uterus is given along with the cervix along with this section so i will also explain the different sections over here so you don't feel uh, you know left out so you can understand better i will show you over here only now before i show you remember this is the fallopian tube okay these are the tube and this is the ovary so you have to take this is the longitudinal surface so along with the long surface you have to take uh, 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 you know one section like this so you have to take one section completely like this okay along the long section and this is the tube you have to cut the tube like this so this is the tube you have to cut the tube you have to take a section transverse section of the tube has to be taken like this from here okay so let me show you the different sections nicely so that you understand very nicely how the sections has to be given so over here let me show you so you can see the endomyo so you have to give the section like this okay the endometrial lining along with the myometrium both should come so you have to give approximately three sections like this endomyo section has to be given okay three such sec sections you give along with that for example normally this you have to cut the fallopian tube transfer section cut the fallopian tube transfer section then you have to take the section completely you have to transfer along the longest axis so if this is the if this is the ovary you okay this is the ovary you have to cut from mid section like this and this flat portion has to be embedded similarly over here you have to do the same thing okay along with that as i told you you have to give the cervix as well so how you are going to take the section of the cervix you have to cut this this is the anterior lip over here so you have to cut like this again okay and you have to give the section so what is the most important part this lining should come so you have to cut accordingly till this point like this similar this is the anterior lip so you have given anterior lip from this part so from this part you give the posterior lip okay so again over here you have to cut like this okay so this part should come okay you have to cut like this okay this is how you give the sections okay this is how you are giving the section also you can see you can see some amount of tissue which is there on the outer aspect of the uterus this is the parametrium in case we are detecting the cancers or in case we are you know trying to understand if there is any kind of cancer we are also giving the parametrial tissue similarly outside the cervix we are having some tissue that is called as para cervical tissue in case of cervical carcinoma we give this para cervical tissue as well so i just trying to make you understand because in case of cancers we are going to give those sections as well so this is the normal uterus the normal sections in case of a non malignant uterus how you are giving so we are just trying to understand this with this with the help of this particular diagram okay okay now in case of a malignant disease of the uterus what you are going to do so hysterectomy hysterectomy for carcinoma of the endometrium so the first five points or the first four points